Hi everyone and welcome back to another What's New video for Vault, this time for the Vault Pro 2024 release. My name is Jason Kelly, an application specialist here at Symmetry. And in this video, we're going to be looking at some of the updates to Vault Pro from a client and admin side. I will also try and point out some of the smaller updates from the point releases in 2023 to ensure, as users, you will get a full understanding of what changes to expect when you upgrade. Here are some of the new features that Autodesk have introduced. As you can see, productivity and security have been a heavy focus in this release. This is going to allow some more manual workflows and procedures to become automated at the core of the product. So let's have a look at these in a bit more detail. Firstly, from a client side, we now have the ability to copy a folder structure. This quick access tool is going to allow you to select on a folder and copy that folder with options, including subfolders, permissions and properties. This is going to drive compliance within companies as standard sets of folders can be generated and manually copied where appropriate. This will also be beneficial for when working within a folder structure that only needs to be accessible by a certain group of users. It's going to save users time and stop any human error when creating folders on mass. So to do this, right click on the folder from the browser on the left and choose the new copy folder option. You then have the options to choose where you want to copy this to and what you want to include. So in this example, I'll be selecting all of the subfolders and permissions to copy across. You can then see if I go to the new location, it's copied all of the folders and excluded any files that were in there. So this new project is now ready to add files to. This is a nice and easy tool to use and it will add a lot of benefit to companies with rigid folder structures. Moving into some of the administration changes and life cycles have had some additional features implemented. These will need to be configured prior to use, but give some added benefit to the automation process. Firstly, extra options for different file formats have been added so that during state change, you are now able to automate file generation for step and flat pattern DXF files, as well as the previously inbuilt PDF functionality. These new formats work exactly the same as the PDF function, in which you are able to generate them outside of the vault to a specific location or inside the vault to the same location of the file or to a designated folder. The option also gives you the same output as before. You can choose to allow users to run this manually or to automate it through state change. So for example, when moving to release state to generate all the files of the type through the job processor. This is going to allow for improved consistency in the business, ensuring all necessary file exports are created. Continuing with life cycles, and a new feature has been added for peer review. This allows for a basic four eyes check on the workflow, so that the same user who moved the file into the from state can't move it to the next state. This can therefore put a step in that will check to ensure that someone else has looked over the file and moved it to the next state change. This can also be configured so that certain custom criteria is met before that state change happens. So if the custom criteria is that the file is a part file and contains a description, it will need to pass the peer review steps. So let's take a look at an example. If you are using a workflow of work in progress to released. Designer A is going to move the part file from released back to work in progress to make the necessary changes for the new release. With the peer review state check on and the criteria of the file being met for a part file and the description property, designer A wouldn't be able to move it from work in progress back to released. Designer B would have to access the file to check it meets all requirements and then move the file from work in progress to released once it's been checked. This is going to allow for companies more control over their data and ensure that it's been fully checked before moving to a released file or a secondary check or approval state. Moving away from the client changes, and there have been a few updates to the admin side and where you are storing your inventor templates and design data. Previously, you had a few options. The first one is that each user could point this to a local drive on their machine 
and all use different templates and design data to one another. However, most companies require this to be a global solution, so every user is working off the same file. This would be stored on a shared server or store them in the vault and download them when any changes are made. So we're going to focus on this last option of storing them in the vault, as this is where the updates have occurred. In previous releases, storing the design data and templates in vault allowed users to have a central location for the data. However, if any of this data was updated, so for example, a change was made to the global template, the user would have to ensure that they performed a get on the file to ensure they have the latest version. This allowed for users to keep falling out of date with templates and design data if regular changes were occurring. Within the new release, you now have the option to map the design data and templates in the Inventor Vault add-in. It will also allow you every time you log into Vault to download any changes ensuring that the latest version of the file is always on your machine. So let's take a look at how it's set up. You now have the option when you configure your Inventor Vault project file to map the templates and design data under the access area. You will need to make sure the project file is read-write before making any changes to it. It would also make sense to add the design data and templates to Vault prior to making the change. Once you have selected the mappings, you can then check the project file back into Vault and log out of the Vault add-in for Inventor. You will notice when you log back in, it will do a scan of your mapping location to the folder in Vault and download any files automatically for you to your local workspace. This will scan for any new files and any changes made to ensure it is at the latest version. This is going to allow companies for more consistency and remove the issue of users forgetting to update the general template and design data files. There are also a few considerations to think about when making this change. Firstly, you may need to change the templates and design data local location on the Vault IPJ file. You may also want to consider, if you don't store it in the vault currently, the security on the template files, so who is able to make the changes to it. You could also consider the lifecycle state on the files, as now you are storing the data in vault, you can put some document control and keep a full history of the data. This is a useful change behind the scenes of vault, that will add a lot of benefit to standardisation. Continuing with the admin changes, and backups and restores have had an update. The previous options you had for a backup was to take a full copy of the databases and file store with a full backup, or an incremental backup that creates a new increment for any changes from the previous full backup taken. Due to a lot of people moving their servers to cloud-based, this server is getting backed up automatically anyway, and there is now a need to reduce space, and therefore cost. With the old full backup method, the file store is being duplicated, which can take up a lot of space in the server and also cause the backup to take a long time. This has led Autodesk to introduce built-in database-only backups so you can reuse the existing file store. You will still need to ensure that an off-site backup is taking place for both the file store and databases. The database backup previously had to be configured through SQL but now comes in the default software. In Vault, it now also gives you the option to choose which databases you want to back up. So you can choose individual vaults or libraries, which again will save you time on the restore if you're not looking to restore everything. So how does this work when restoring the backup? When you choose to restore from a backup, you can now point to a different file store location. So this could be an existing file store on the machine. If you were looking to not have a file store for a migration purpose to save time on upgrade, you can also now choose to have no file store validation. This will mean that when you are migrating, you are only migrating the databases that need to be upgraded. Once you're on the new server, you can then redirect the file store to point it to the correct location by going to Actions and choosing Redirect. The redirect can also be used to move to a different location but note that redirecting will not delete the original file store. The final new feature we're going to look through is the updates to the Thin Client. As I mentioned, some of these updates came out in the point release for the 2023 version. 
Here is a list of the new updates. We are going to take a look through some of these in more detail. The first and most valuable update is the advanced search feature. This is going to allow read-only viewers quick navigation of the environment and also filter through properties to narrow the search. You can add multiple criteria to the search function, as well as search for files, items or change orders. Configuring views from an admin setting is also another feature that was added in the 2023.2 version. This will allow a default view to be configured so the read-only users aren't wasting time configuring them, and admins are able to define the most useful properties for the company. Some smaller features were also added to the DIN client, including being able to choose which vault you want to log into if you have multiple, saving time editing the URL. Also, having an update visualisation option when selected into a file. This is just to make it clearer and it will still send it to the job processor when you create the file. Items now also has the option to only show released items. The final small change are that you are now able to extract data from the thin client to an Excel spreadsheet and also expand and collapse all the folders rather than making this a manual task. These small updates are making the new look thin client more user friendly and more appealing to the read only access users. If you are interested in hearing more detail about the 2024 release or are interested in upgrading, then please contact your account manager here at Symmetry and we'll be happy to help.